just want to say that um, this right here, Plaza Beats here, is a small part of the big picture that's going on. But see, the thing it is is that no one pays attention to this right here. If everybody walk all around it, go all around it and say things, do things, but we don't want that anymore. We want to be a part of the picture. Okay? We don't want to look invisible anymore. Okay? We have people come to uh, uh, give us resources and do things for us and stay for a minute and then they're gone. And they promise our children so much, especially our teens. And they give, give, give speeches and, and, and make promises, but promises are never kept. And I've been working in this community for a long time with a lot of people. And a lot of people have given up, but I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to ever give up. Because I want to see our children have what they need. And I want to see our community have what it needs. Because this is a beautiful place over here. And it deserves some attention. So hoping that we can get some support in this community. You know, and have some support from all, whoever be, uh, get this position to have support for uh, Plaza East over here. Now I'm going to hand it over. Uh, I don't have the questions, but I'm going to let whoever want to come next. What four main, yeah, main topics will you work so, on? So uh, we've been working on um, job creation, but it's not enough to just provide the jobs. You have to provide the wraparound services that people need in order to succeed in those jobs. And um, so we are, uh, we have worked with uh, certain community groups like the Y, we've worked with uh, uh, other groups like uh, West Side Courts because I believe that there are a lot of people who uh, have been shortchanged by the educational system. Four things, let me try and keep it succinct, okay? Number one, we need to be creative about job creation. Cleveland just recently I instituted a uh, workaround cooperative program. 50 youth from uh, low-income communities in Cleveland learn to own their own business, providing a laundry service for the local hospital, a living wage job. Cleveland can do it, San Francisco can do it. That's on, on the top of my agenda. Affordable housing in San Francisco. We haven't done an affordable housing bond here since 1996. We need to invest upwards of a billion dollars in affordable housing over the next five to 10 years if we're really gonna be able to meet our goals around keeping the city sustainable, culturally, ethnically, economically, sustainable. Yeah. Lemon's right. Jobs. Year Up is a program that we that is working successfully here in the Western Edition that's taking 18 to 25 year old kids. It's training them for seven months, and within four months of graduation, they have a job. 85% of them have a good job in high tech. And we need more of those kinds of programs. So you know, the current supervisor hasn't lived in this district longer than any other candidate in this race. And if she had, she would know that I'm not a talker, I'm a doer. I've raised over $2.5 million to renovate the African American Art Culture Complex, which is a space that many of us go to, many of our kids go to, and I spent my childhood in the African American Art Culture Complex, not just the cent uh, running the center of programs, hiring case managers, giving stipends to kids, paying for food, doing all of the things necessary. The says that developed country is not one where poor people own cars, it's where rich people take public transit. I think we need to start making San Francisco the number one public transportation city in the country. Uh, public health is one that's near and dear to my heart. We don't talk about it enough, but there's a lot of health disparities. So, uh, and they have a lot to do with where you, where you live. We need to close those health disparities. We need to put some resources behind because health 